Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today I want to talk about this trick sub integral. And if you just look at the uh, x to the fourth minus x to the sixth inside the square root, you can see that it has the higher power than usual trick sub integrals because they usually have uh, either the sum of two squares, difference of two squares, right? But now we have a uh, higher power, x to the fourth, and then x to the sixth. Um, is this a difficult problem? This is not a difficult problem. The reason for why I'm still doing this is really because um, there are some good details that I want to show in the steps when we are uh, trying to switch back from data to x. Okay, so let's just get started and then we'll see what's going on. Okay, so we're getting this problem. The first thing that we need to do that is that while we don't real, really realize that this is a trick sub problem, what we can do is that we can try to simplify the integral first. Okay, so how do we simplify this integral here? Uh, first thing is that we can actually just factor out x to the fourth from both terms in here, right? So you're going to get the square root of x to the fourth. That's what you need to factor out. And then you would be getting one minus x squared, right? If you factor out x to the fourth. So from here, we get we, everything is still inside that square root. So now we get to this. And then you can see that for this x to the fourth, and then there was a square root where you can take it outside the square root, which will give us the integral of x squared, and then the square root of one minus x squared. And then there is a dx. Is that okay? So as you can see here, that's just equivalent to this one. And actually that's not even difficult to integrate, right? Because it's just like a typical uh, use up, um, tricks up problem, not use up, but tricks up problem here. Okay, so what tricks substitution do we need to make here? Because we have the form of one minus x squared. So we are going to just think about what we plug in here that will turn into a perfect square of a trick function. And so the answer is sine, right? So you got to let x be sine data right here. So I'm just going to make the tricks up right now. Okay, so what we're doing is that we are going to write x is equal to sine data right here. Okay, and then we got to find the derivative, which will give us that dx is equal to cosine data and then d data here. Okay, just remember that we are going to have, um, we are going to just also define the sine inverse function. So in this case, we need to set a boundary for data. It's bounded between negative pi over two to pi over two so that the function is a one-on-one -on -one function, then the inverse works. Okay, so now we have actually, we have with this. And then we can also draw the triangle too at this point if you want or you can wait until later to draw it, but I will just draw it right now. So I'm just going to draw the triangle, the right triangle. That will allow us to do the switch back to the original variable when we finished with the integration, right? So there's the data here. And so you can actually pretend that X is really just what? It's X, X over one, right? So in that case, you can actually label this triangle Okay, so how do we label it? Sine data is equal to x over one. So that's the opposite, right? Over the hypotenuse. So we get x and the one right here. And then what do we get in the adjacent side? It's going to be the hypotenuse square minus the opposite square. So now you have the right triangle. We are not going to use it right now. We still got to do the integration after we make the substitution. Okay, so let's do that. Let's do the substitution. So we are going to start substituting all this stuff in here so that our integral, okay, will become, we have the x squared here, so we square, we plug the sine data into the x. So you have sine data, right? And then you get the square. And then we have the square root okay of one minus and then again it would also be another sine data that we have right here right and then the square and then don't forget that there was still the dx that we need to worry about here so don't forget that there will be this dx that you need to substitute in 
right? So we are going to be getting what? Cosine theta d theta. So now we have finished making all the substitution. So right now, what do we do? We have a sine square here. This is one minus sine square. So we get cosine square in here. So the next step, we get sine square data, right? And then the square root of cosine square data. And then we also have that, the dx, right? Now it becomes cosine data d data. So now what do we have here? Um, this cosine square with the square root, if you simplify them, you're going to get uh, absolute value of cosine data, right? But because we define this function so that data is only in either in quadrant four or quadrant one, right? And also including the quadrantal angles. In that case, cosine is non-negative. So we don't really need the absolute value. We can actually just simplify that as cosine data, which can be combined with this cosine data right here. So we are going to get what? We are going to be getting, okay, so what do we get here? Sine square data. And then combining those two together, we get another uh, cosine square data. I mean, we get another factor that's cosine square data right here. Okay. So from here, we can, um, you can see that they both have the even powers right here. So we can, we can use the what? We can use the half angle formulas for both, right? So we are going to get integral of one over two. Okay. And then we get one minus cosine of two data, right? So you can see here, this thing gives you this one. And then of course the other one, well, the other one is this one, right? The, this one gives you the other one, which is one over two, one plus cosine of two data. And we have this. And then we have the D data right here. Okay, um, we can pull the all the, the the constants outside the integral, right? So we are going to get one over four integral of now. This is one minus cosine two data. This is one plus cosine two data. Don't you recognize that that that's actually the uh, difference of two squares, right? So we actually would be getting one minus so you got to square the first turn right so you score the one which will still give you the one and then you got to score the second turn which would give you a cosine square and then you we can also use the uh trick identity right one minus cosine square we get sine square so we can rewrite it as one over four integral of sine square of two data, right? And then from here, this is another square even power for the sine, right? To, we cannot integrate. So to integrate this thing, we actually need to use the half angle formula one more time, right? So we got to do that. So we are going to get one over four times Okay, this time it will be one over two. Actually, we don't need the dot here. So let me rewrite this. So one over two, and then because that's sine, so we are going to be getting one minus cosine of, okay, so let's think about what to put into this blank here. Remember we are using the half angle formula. So when we apply that right here in this step to this next step here, we originally had data and then after we apply the half angle formula, we are going to get two data here because whatever that we have here will be half of the new expression, right? Of the argument in the new expression. So in this case, we have two data here. We are going to double that again, right? So we are going to get four data here. Yeah, because the original expression, I mean, if the argument in the original expression should be half of whatever that you have here, right? So we have four data here. And then now we would be able to integrate directly. Okay, so let's continue. We are going to get one over eight. Okay, we simply just multiply the coefficients, I mean the constants together, right? And then we can integrate the one and also the cosine four data right here. So integrating them, 
The one actually gives you something that's nice, right? That's just data that you're getting. The other one is to integrate the cosine for data here, the minus sign, I'm just keeping it. And so what's the antiderivative cosine? We get sine, right? So we get sine of for data here. But don't forget to reverse the chain rule, right? Because when we differentiate this, we are going to get an extra factor of four due to the chain rule. But there is no four right here. So I'm going to put a one over four right here so that we are reversing the chain rule. By now, because we're done with the integration, there was to be a constant in integration, but I would, I would just omit it for now and then I will attach it later. Okay, so right now, um, here's the question. How do we switch back to the original variable x? The problem is that we have a full data right here, right? So the way to do it is that it would be a good idea to actually use the double angle formulas for this one. Okay, so we are going to get 1 over 8 data, right, minus 1 over 32. But at the same time, we need to apply the double angle formula, right? So we got to apply the double angle formula, which would be from this one, right? <laughs> So I already did the calculation with the 1 over 8 and the negative 1 over 4. So I get negative 1 over 32. But then for the double angle formula, I'm going to be getting 2 sine of 2 data, cosine of 2 data. Is that okay? <clears throat> and at the same time, so just don't need to wait. We can just cancel those things first, right? <clears throat> Okay, now, we still cannot really use the right triangle to help us switch those two expressions back into x. It's really because we still have two data here and the triangle only works for data, okay? So what do we do? <clears throat> we are going to do this. So we are going to have um, 1 over 8 data, right? And actually, yeah, so I think, yeah, that would be enough space right here, minus 1 over 16. Okay, so what about the sine of two data here? We can rewrite that as two sine data, cosine data. Just apply the double angle formula one more time. Okay, so we just apply that. Then we are going to be getting two sine data, cosine data. Okay, that's this one is from here. So just to just to show that, let's say that this one gives you this okay well there was another one right there was another one right there and then so this one this cosine of two data right here gotta give us well another um another one that we need to use the double angle formula which will give us cosine squared data minus sine squared data so I highlight that color right here so that you can see that that one comes from here. Okay, so we have all that. Um, we are actually ready to switch back to the original variable x. Okay, so let's do it. We have 1 over 4. Okay, so... Actually, not 1 over 4, right? We have 1 over 8. Yeah, because that's coming from here, 1 over 8. Data is actually easy to, to replace because we have sine data equals x. So all we need to do is to use the ox sine. So it would just be sine inverse of x. Yes, right? Because it actually comes directly from here, as you can see. This one will actually just give us sine inverse of x equals data, right? Because if we're solving the data in this equation, remember the, the inverse exists because we set the boundaries with the data right here. So we have that. Okay. Now continue. We have the minus 1 over 16. Okay. So we're getting this two sine data, cosine data. You know that sine data is simply just the x, right? You have the two in here. So we have times two and then x, okay? 
And then cosine data, cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so we get that expression. Just square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, so far so good. Now, the stuff in the blue, right? So we have the cosine squared data minus the sine squared data. So we got to put that here, which would be, well, I think I should put the brackets just because there was a minus sign right here, right? We got to distribute. So what do we have here? Cosine squared data, it's just this over one, but then you're squaring it. So you have no more square root. So you just get one minus x squared, okay? And then minus, now minus, gives you the sine squared data, right? Sine squared data is what? Sine data is x, so sine squared is x squared. So we minus the x squared. Okay, so let's continue right here. We have one over eight sine inverse of x, and then minus. I'll do some cancellation right here. So the one, that will give us eight, right? So you have one over eight. And then x square root of 1 minus x square. Okay, what do we get here? We are going to be getting 1 minus 2x square. Right, just subtract the x square like twice, right? So we get this. So um, if you want, you can distribute this, right? So if we distribute, or we can simply have the answer as 1 over 8 sine inverse of x minus now, if you distribute this to the 1, then you are just going to have the same thing, right? So 1 over 8 x is the square root of 1 minus x squared. And then distribute this to the negative 2 x squared, so we get positive. 1 over 4, how do we get 1 over 4? The 2 and the 8 will get canceled, right? And then you still have 4 in the denominator. And then the x times the x squared will give us the x cubed. And then the square root of 1 minus x squared. And then plus c, right? So we can put the plus c right here. So either one is the answer. It's up to you that which one that you like better, right? So, so see that it's not really a difficult problem. It's just that when you get a four data right here, then you need to do it like multiple steps with um, using double angle formula so that you can switch back to uh, the expression using the right triangle, right? Otherwise, you will not be able to switch back to x in this case. OK, so that's it for this problem. To help me make math learning available to everyone, please share my videos to others and subscribe to my channel. It will give me support to make more videos. Let's work together to help students and children learn math more easily. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time.